It's not always about the money, Spider-Man. It's about the Mets, baby. Love the Mets. All right, baby. Let's go get a home run, baby. Love the Mets. Let's go Mets. Together with Neural Sports Bench, yeah, the twins, they be checking in. Stacking up green is the scene that you're stepping in. When it is a trend, and we say making dollars. Nerd talk with the sports bet scholars. We are live. Welcome back to another edition of the Euro Sports Bet Show. My name is Nicholas Earl. I will be joined here by my brother, my brother Tim, in just a little bit. Uh, but uh, before we get into today's games, before we get into today's slate, happy opening day, everybody. Uh, if you want to check out opening day picks, opening day breakdowns, all that, all that, Tim and I did a show on that last night because tonight or this morning's show is going to be up, is going to be hockey. And it's going to be Sweet 16. We did have opening date last night, so plenty of content there to go around for all the sports. Um, and we'll get into it. Uh, last night was a small card for me. Went uh, slightly down, but nothing crazy. Went, what was it, two and three last night. Uh, down 0.68 units. Not, not anything worth writing home about or anything along those lines. I lost my only play in the NHL, Boston, minus 104. And just whatever. Uh, the entire world wins with Tampa Bay. Um, so that was fun there. Portland plus 11, Portland plus 460 falls. But then to prevent the uh, reverse sweep yesterday, only five plays from yesterday. Uh, Phoenix plus seven and a half. Phoenix money line comes through there. So um, overall, slightly down, but it could have been way worse. Um, yesterday, uh, NBA slightly up. NHL obviously 0 and 1 uh, in this game uh, there. So, um, but uh, we will get into the chat and then we will get into today's games, which there's 14 hockey games we'll be going over and then four Sweet 16 games. Marcos coming in. The uh, chat is all Marcos this morning. The Suns, yes, the Suns. Uh, that was the lot, the lone bright side for me last night was the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix melted up and ate the spicy nuggets last night. Yeah, I don't know about Denver making that get to the finals. I don't know. Um, yeah, Denver better hope they don't see the Suns. And see, I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll see. There, uh, Suns in the playoffs best. Mm. Beat them last month in OT in Denver. Yeah, they've they played well against Denver this season. Goodish pick on that uh, on uh, yesterday, Nick. Uh, two, I said the money line, and he said yeah. I took the seven and a half of the plus two forty. Good job, appreciate it. Uh, Road Warriors go to Orlando. I was looking towards them as well a little bit, but I didn't get involved. I didn't get involved with it. Um, Hornets plus ten. There you go. Nice little winner there. Was good as well. Um, and money line. Nice. Good call on that Twins. We like that. Yep. Houston plus the points. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't move on Houston plus the points on the winning streak that are on right now. And uh, what's up, my guys? Let's get it. Let's catch today. Show some appreciate, subscribe, and scare. Tim A, you know the rest of the dog. Yeah, plenty of NHL to go over for today. Lots of NHL, just what Marcos wants to hear. And we'll start it off here in the NHL, um, where we have the Chicago Blackhawks and the Calgary Flames. The My bad. That was last game. Chicago Blackhawks and the Ottawa Senators in this one here. Senators, we're seeing minus 195, total six and a half in this game. Um, currently getting my hockey numbers loaded up here so we can go over line history and we can go over cash flow for that. Um, for this game, we it looks like uh, the tickets are not much today. So the markets are not going to be any help today. So that's, that's fun for, for tickets and cash and stuff like that. Uh, but when it comes to line history and this one here, this line on bet online, let's get up bet online opened up with the senators. This will click. Of course it won't because 
Uh, line open up at a minus, uh, minus 215. It's down to a 185 for Ottawa now. So we've had a line movement towards the uh, towards the Blackhawks in this game. And the line opened up at a 6.5 at plus 109. It's a 6.5 at plus 101. So we've had a move towards the uh, over in this game. We've had a move towards the Blackhawks in this game. I 100% agree with the movement towards the Blackhawks in this game as well. I played Chicago at plus 180 last night. Um, and this is one of those pretty, pretty simple situations for me. And... Um, Actually, I think it's going to be Anton Forsberg for the Sens in this game here. So a little bit less excited about it, but because uh, I believe Corpus Allo went last night. But still, the Senators should not be laying this type of number on a back-to-back right now. And I get it, the Blackhawks are not a good hockey team, but they've been playing a little bit better as of late. They're coming in off of a nice win against the Black uh, against the Flames. Uh, they had that really nice comeback win against the Sharks. They're on a two-game winning streak after getting blanked 4 nothing against the Anaheim Ducks. So uh, this is a Blackhawks team that's playing a little bit better as of late. Um, and I'm going to look to to make a move on them here. I got them plus 180 uh, in this game. Uh, shop around, you'll probably uh, – let's see. Shop around, you'll find a decent number on them uh, here. Uh, for Chicago, I'm going to be surprised if this line's dropped because this is a back-to-back as well, which is not a great situation for Ottawa. They are coming in off of a nice, satisfying blowout win last night. And, yeah, those 180s are gone. Um, I'm seeing 165. I'd play it as low as 155, 150 um, in this game. So, chop around. You'll still find a good enough number to bet this game. Blackhawks for me. Uh, let's see. Player props went one and three. Yeah. Marco's on here having a conversation with himself. Yep. Marco's writing stories. Yep. Mar- Marco's is it one of our one of our uh, favorite commenters, though. He's he's there every show basically. And he he's we we enjoy having him in the chat. Kachuk two points. Batherson two points plus six seventy five run it right, six twenty five running back. I don't know. We'll see. Um Cannon. Uh, haha, true. Yeah. <laughs> Tim not happy with the Sens. Uh, Kurashev over half a point. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, also happy MLB is here. F hockey. Yeah. Blackhawks own the Sens. Yes, that's also another thing is I believe the uh, – I don't remember the exact numbers behind it, but, yeah, it's been basically ownership that the Blackhawks have over the Senators. It's kind of crazy uh, the type of track history that uh, Chicago has against Ottawa. And it's just been a pure domination one. Uh, ten in a row at least. Uh, eight two three two four three eight seven three two five one six three four three five nothing three two, and they've won the last few as pretty decent dogs. Plus one seventy three, plus two hundred seven, plus two sixteen. So they were in big favorites all the time in the in this in this series. Uh, Ottawa just can't seem to beat the Blackhawks. So yeah, one hundred percent. Tim, we need your player props still. Yeah. I'm on my way home. Be there for college basketball. Fair. Uh, Pinto, two plus points. Uh, Drew, two plus points. Good luck. Yeah, all jokes. Okay, yeah. Kublik used to play for the Hawks. Anytime goal. Yeah. Uh, Blackhawks, 11 and 0 versus Senators, 13 and 2. And the Sens have a back to back. Three units, Blackhawks. Wow. Yeah, I got plus 180. I love the price I got with them last night there. We'll move into this game. I do have a play on this one as well. We have the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Columbus Blue Jackets in this game here. Well, let's take a look at the line history in this one where we have uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins. They opened up as minus 214 favorites. They're up to the 224 in this game now. So we've had a line movement towards Pittsburgh in this spot. Line opened up at a 6.5 at minus 110. It's a 6.5 at minus 115. So we've been moved towards them as well. Um, that's right. We have no, no help for cash flow and stuff like that. Uh, but I did make a move on this game last night. I played the over six and a half in this game. I have this game projected for seven goals. Um, I don't trust the Penguins as this big of favorites. It would be Blue Jackets or nothing. Maybe a Blue Jacket team total over. Uh, actually, the more I think about it, the more I want to I want to maybe jump on that team total over here uh, with the Blue Jackets in this game. Uh, this feels like one of those spots where we see 3-3 at some point in this game. Uh, last time these two teams played, I believe it was a 5-3 game. These two teams, I think, generally speaking, play high-scoring games against each other as well. Um but yeah, I've already moved on the over six and a half in this game. 
Uh, I have this game. I had this game projected for seven. Last two times these teams have played, it was a five-three final for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, the previous set three-two, five-four, four-one, six-three, five-three, five-one, three-two, five-two. So they've been a decent over series in this one here between these two teams. I could see a five-three type of game as well for this one here. Uh, I'll probably look to add that team total over for the uh, Blue Jackets. I think that's kind of a decent look um, in this spot. I don't trust the Penguins at this number, so. Um, I'm going to lean Blue Jackets team total. Might add it later, but I'm on the over six and a half in this game. Penguins minus one and a half. Kind of like the over two. Yeah, I think the over is worth the look. Oh, man, no Tim A. Yeah. I'm uh, hoping he'd read my comments. He did read uh, your comments there. Uh We'll head into the next matchup here. We have the New York Islanders and the Florida Panthers. The Panthers minus 200 favorites in this game with a total of six in this spot. Uh, let's take a look at the line history in this one here where this line opened up with the Florida Panthers um, as decent sized favorites, minus 191. It's up to a 193. Line opened up at a six at minus 112. It's a six at minus 110. So we've had a move towards the um, under and we've had a move towards the Panthers slightly. Um, and I have this game projected for the Islanders to be around plus 150. So I do see a little bit of value here with the road dog in this spot. Um, am I looking to bet the Islanders at all? No, they've kind of given up on the season. I think there are six, there's six points behind the Capitals now for that last wild card spot. There are like seven points behind the Flyers for that wild card spot. So this is not a team that uh, is going to be doing anything this year. They're kind of playing out the strings at this point. One thing I do like that uh, Patrick Waugh has done is uh, even though this Islanders team hasn't played uh, in a few days, the last time they played, I believe, was on Saturday against the um, – uh, was it Saturday or was it Monday? I think it was Monday against the Devils the last time that, uh, the Islanders played. Um, and so they've had a few days off, and they're going with Varlamov in net, uh, which if I'm the Islanders – Sorokin's not had it this year. I don't know what it is, but Sorokin's just not been himself this year. Um, Varlamov has been the better of the two goalies. And I'm more interested in backing the Islanders with Varlamov in that right now than Sorokin, um, which is not something I thought I'd be saying heading into the season here. Uh, so if the Islanders are past for me, I'm not going to get involved with this game. Um, I don't trust the Islanders anymore. Um, this is a team that's kind of mailed it in. Their, their season's over, so... Not looking to back them here, um, and I don't like fading my uh, fading the the Florida Panthers either as well. Uh, so uh, even though I almost did it last game with them playing Boston, which this is uh, this is Florida off of a loss now, uh, they've kind of been struggling a little bit as of late. But uh, no, nah, it's a it's a pass for me in this game on the spot. Let's see, Chinnikov two points, Malkin two points. Good luck. What about uh, about NBA? Yeah. Phoenix, no Nick Denver will not be in the finals. I, the more and more I'm looking at it, I think it could be New Orleans. I think it could be the Pellies. Pass. Evan Rodriguez point. There you go. Panthers money line parlay, maybe. No, Nick LOL. Uh, not NHL. Marcos does not want to hear of that NBA. No, I don't want to hear the NBA either. No. Yo, yo, yo. What's good, Joe Kryptonite? Had to take the Orioles minus one and a half and the DK promo bet a team to get the most season wins and receive $2 bonus bet for every when they do plus seven. I need to find that promo um, because I'm going to take the Astros. I want to take the Astros for that. Um, thanks. Uh, thanks for letting me know about that promo. I have to, I have to check it out now um, when I have a minute and I'm not running a show uh, to grab um, that. So, uh, today's the day, sun is shining, the tank is clean, the tank is clean. Hello, though. What's good, Markel? Uh, Reinhardt goal. Yeah, I can see Reinhardt goal. Uh, plus 130, minus one and a half, or are the Islanders going to play good? I could see this game going to overtime. Bone Jangles meal is now over $10. Uh, I remember when it was six eighty. I Yeah, I remember when it was like seven eighty four or whatever it was. Uh, now, now my meal, if I don't want to add fries to it um, and just do the mac and cheese, it's like nine and change. If I want to add fries, it's like 12. 
Um, yeah. Damn. <laughs> Finding Nemo. <name. laughs> Today's the day. The sun is shining. The tank is clean. <gasps> the tank is clean. <laughs> we'll head to the next matchup here. The Philadelphia Flyers taking on the Montreal Canadiens. Les Habitons. Um, minus 145 for the Flyers. Total of six in this game. This is probably a fade the Canadiens type of spot uh, for this matchup here. And we have... This line, a line opened up with the Flyers as minus 150 favorites. It's down to a 148 uh, in this game. Um, and then uh, the line opened up at a 6 at minus 106. It is now a 6 at minus 104 here and there on um, for that. Uh, so we've had a move towards the uh, under. We've had a move towards the can, uh, Canadians in this spot here. Kind of interesting there. Um, taking a look. At my projections for this game, I mean, I have I have the Flyers projected as favorites about this 140, 145 price range here in this one. Kind of a tricky spot here for the Canadians, and I feel like situationally this is just a spot where I need to fade the Canadians um, in this one, uh, even though the line's moving towards them um, in this game. Montreal coming back, very similar to what we saw Buffalo come back from last night, and also Tampa Bay. Uh, which Tampa Bay was able to get through it. But you have a Montreal Canadiens team. Uh, they ended off the road trip really nice with a 2-1 a, a to win over Colorado and a 5-1 win over Seattle. But they just, they're coming back from a five-game road trip where they're in Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, Seattle, Colorado. That's a tough road trip, and to come back from that is always difficult there. Um, and this is a Flyers team that still desperately needs points because they're not, they're not out of the woods yet for um, – for, play, for the playoffs there. They've lost back-to-back games. They lost in overtime against the Rangers in their last game there. And uh, now, granted, they don't – I mean, they have a relatively easy schedule throughout the rest of the season. Montre- at Montreal, Chicago, Islanders, at Buffalo, at Columbus, at Montreal, Ranger, at the Rangers, Devils, and Capitals to end the year. So they don't have that difficult of a schedule remaining, uh, these Philadelphia Flyers. So kind of a tricky spot here for them. I would lean Flyers in this game. I can only look Flyers with the way with with the situation that the um, with the way with the situation the Canadians are in, and the more and more I talk about, it, the more and more I'm interested in maybe just taking a minus one line with the Philadelphia Flyers and expecting uh, this to be a flat spot for the Montreal Canadiens coming back home after a long road trip, uh, which you can get probably a decent number minus minus one forty six plus one sixty eight on Fanduel. Um, Let's take a look what that would be. One sixty-eight. Um, be a plus one hundred nine. Uh, plus one hundred nine for the minus one line for Philly. I might write. I'm, I want to. I want to write that down and add that after the end of the show. Um, and I'll add that to my list with um, with the Columbus Blue Jackets team total over. I think I'm gonna move on the Flyers minus one or minus uh, plus one hundred nine for this game. Let's see, draw. Good amount of OT last 10 minutes between these two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Samuel Montempo play unreal BS. I let the abs let one go in, and it was in the first minute. Uh, I don't think he's going to do that back to back games. I, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, Tim, did you say F the Sens when you meant to say F the Suns? No, because the Senators played the Sabres last night. Arison is starting to let in goals. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping he would. But uh, yeah, yes, sir. What's good, Justin? Lean Flyers, but uh, would have to take the 60 minute uh, and not making a tie, no bet draw. 60 minutes, yeah. Owen oh, Tippett over half a point. I could see that. Over six and a half. Stacks Pod is the Astros over eight and a half. Uh, I'm on the Astros minus one in that game. We went over that game last night. Um, I like this Astros team this year an awful lot. I think that they could be the best team in baseball uh, with that. So um, I'm still trying to see where is that. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to go and uh, figure out that uh, what do you call it that that promo where you can where you can bet a team and every win you get bonus bet. But Washington Capitals are at the Toronto Maple Leafs minus 180 for the Leafs total of six and a half in this game. Let's take a look at the line history in this spot here between Washington and Toronto. 
where this line opened up with the Maple Leafs as minus 180 favorites. It's down to a 156. So we are a 175, my bad. Uh, it's plus 156 the other way with the uh, Capitals in this spot. Line opened up at a 6.5 minus 101. It is still at that 6.5 at minus 101. Um, taking a look at the projections for my projections for this game here. And I don't know why the Maple Leafs are this big of favorites in this game. It seems a little wide. And the Capitals have been just playing some really good hockey as play, especially as dogs. Um, and I mean, they're they're going to make the playoffs this year. The Capitals. I don't really see anyone stopping them now. Um, with the way that they they've been playing as of late, I don't really see the Red Wings catching up to them. I don't see the Islanders or the Devils or anyone st- uh, stepping up and catching them here. Granted, the Leafs have been absolutely dominant in this series, three straight and seven of the last eight have gone to the Toronto Maple Leafs between them and the Capitals. Uh, so I can see this as a game where the Maple Leafs come out and puck line them, or I could see this as a game where the um, where the Capitals win in overtime or something along those lines. My lean is towards the Capitals here. I'm not betting this game, but um, this line does seem a little wide um, in this spot. Tricky, tricky game. Uh, it's a pass for me. Uh, caps or nothing, though, in this spot. At this price, it's caps or nothing. Uh, see, raise up. Let's cash twins. Yes, I'm on. I'm on the Tampa Bay race today. Um, Leafs money line leaves minus one and a half. Uh, the DK promo I caught it about 25 hours ago. Might have a short window considering it's opening day. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Opening day bonus bet. Uh, opt in. Use place an MLB wager. Um, nope, that's not what it's. That's not it. No, that's not it either. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Twenty five hours. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't be mad if the Pels made it to the finals against my Bucks, but I think it'll be the Road Warriors or the Suns from the West. Um, Nick, that's what, for what I know, I think I want to move on some NBA futures soon and it's going to be the New York Knicks. Um, it's in a team I've been high on all season long. Um, and I think it's, it's about time I actually like bet them. So yeah, going to keep taking the capitals till they lose. Yeah. You know? Uh, remember the last time the Leafs played them seven to one. Yep. They dominated them. Leafs team total over three and a half. I'm still waiting for the Capitals to fall apart. I just don't think it's going to happen anymore. Detroit Red Wings and the Carolina Hurricanes, minus 270 for the Hurricanes in this game. Total of six. Huge line, considering that the Red Wings are a team that are competing for a playoff spot right now. But with that being said, I mean, I do have this game projected around 240, 250 for the Hurricanes. So I do understand why the line is this wide because the Hurricanes are just that good of a team. Um, let's take a look at the cash flow or the uh, line history in this one here, where on Bet Online this line opened up at a minus 210. It skyrocketed to a 256 um, in this game. Uh, so we've had a move towards uh, Carolina, and we've had uh, this line open up at a 6 at minus 115. It's now a 6 at minus 1, still at 115. It got up to a 125 at one point, but no line movement on the total here in this spot. I have no interest in this game. This this is an obscure, uh, uh, not obscure. Uh, the this is a, a big price tag uh, to pay for the Hurricanes uh, in this spot. And whenever I do touch the Hurricanes, they fall apart and they look like crap. So maybe I might maybe I might bet them through the playoffs to get them eliminated in the first round. But that's beyond the point. Um, but this game, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of value at Detroit. But do I want to take a shot here, at Detroit? Not really. Um, Detroit. This is this is a this is a must win game for Detroit though, um, because their their playoffs are slipping away. Not because uh, because of or because of the, uh, the hurricane or but because of the Capitals. Their their playoff hopes are slipping away. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens there. Uh, they are now two points behind the Capitals, and the Capitals have a, a game in hand against the Red Wings after they lost in overtime against them last game. Uh, so it's a little concerning there, but um, I don't know. This is a pass for me. I, I have no interest in this game. Dylan Strom over half a point. Yep. 
I have the Mavericks to win the division because they caught they have such an easier schedule uh, than the Pelicans. They're only a game behind. Fair. Reimer and and Net Canes minus one and a half. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, Red Wings defense is not good. I don't, I don't think they were a playoff team. I said that a while ago that they weren't going to be a playoff team. Canes winning the cup. Yeah, I could see that. Or I can, but I, I, I like the Panthers or the Avalanche. Those are the two teams I'm riding with. Uh, Reimer has been doing better than Lion lately. Yeah, but everyone has been doing better than Lion. Yep. Uh, we'll keep on moving on here. I do have a play in this game where we have the uh, Calgary Flames and the St. Louis Blues. The Blues minus 135 favorites with a total six in this game. Um, must win game for St. Louis here. Uh, their last game was against Vegas that they lost in overtime, which really hurt. Line opened up at a 140. It's down to a 133. So we've had a move towards Calgary, which is interesting in this game. Line opened up at 104. It's up to a 110. So we've had a move towards the over here as well. And uh, this is a, a big game for St. Louis as well, who um, after that loss against the Vegas Golden Knights uh, in overtime now find themselves six points behind. Uh, Vegas for that six seed. So it's kind of, I think we're kind of getting the separation here in the West where we, we know the eight teams by now. It is going to be Dallas, Vancouver, Colorado, Winnipeg, Edmonton, Nashville, LA, and Vegas pending an absolute collapse uh, from, from one of the uh, either LA or Vegas, which I don't see happening. Um, so uh, I, I think St. Louis is going to be that team on the bubble on the outside looking in, unfortunately, and my plus 170 is going to come up short. But uh, looking at this game here, I'm going to continue to fade the Calgary Flames more than anything in this game. Um, the Calgary Flames are a bet against team for me. They lost against Chicago. They lost against Buffalo. They lost against Vancouver. They lost against Washington. Uh, this has been a team that's just been on an absolute free fall um, as of late. They've lost four in a row. Uh, and I'm going to look for them to lose a fifth in a row here on the road against St. Louis. I'm on the Blues at plus, minus 135. If you don't like the minus 135, you can play the minus one line. You can get plus plus money for the minus one line for the Blues. I see them taking care of business here as they continue to at least push towards trying to strive towards a playoff spot. I don't see that them doing it anymore. But they, may, they kind of have a decent schedule to do it. They have the Flames, the Sharks twice on their schedule, the Ducks, the Blackhawks, the Kraken all on their schedule. Now, granted, they do have the Stars, the Hurricanes, and the Preds and the Oilers on their schedule as well. But they don't have a terrible schedule to try to fight and claw their way back to a playoff spot. So they do have some easy games on their schedule. I think it gets started here with the, with the Blues taking care of business here against the Flames. I'm on the Blues at minus 135 here in this one. Let's see. Marcos, it's Nuggets versus Cavs in the NBA Finals. Lean Flames money line. No. Happy the MLB opening day. If you want to check that out, we did a show last night. Um, Canes versus Knights in the Cup. No. Avalanche Panthers. Under. Wings win tonight. Old. Uh, Tiger slash Wings parlay. Thank you later. Oh, boy. White Sox money line. What percentage profit is your line in the sand um, that keeps you off a of bet? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, Patrick Kane over half a point. Yeah, I could see it. Minnesota Wild are a minus 400 favorite. Can you see why I'm not too interested in this game? Maybe a, maybe a Sharks alternative plus two and a half. Let's get into it here. Where I'm bet online, we have the uh, San Jose Sharks, uh, they are, if this will click, or uh, the Minnesota Wild and San Jose Sharks. There we go. Line opened up at a minus 328. It's up to a minus 368 now. So we've had a big move towards Minnesota. Line opened up at a 6 at minus 118. It's now a 6 at minus 113 in this game. And this is this is a crazy price tag, and, and obviously, I'm not going to sit here and tell you there's uh, there's value on a minus 350, minus 400 favorite because there's not. And usually, with these type of games, and I think this is where I'm going to go with this game here. I'm going to take the Sharks plus two and a half. Um, if I can get a reasonable price on it, uh, I'm going to shop around and see if I can find a decent two and a half in this game. Um, Sharks have been a little bit feisty as of late. They they played semi close in their game against the. Um, Against um, the 
uh, stars, they would have covered that plus two and a half. It wasn't for an empty net goal late. Um, but this is still a Minnesota Wild team that should not be this big of a favorite. I get it. It's against the Sharks. I get it. They're a more rested team. Sharks have lost, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games in a row. Uh, but they've covered the plus two and a half in uh, a few of them. Uh, they've, they've, this, this is a team just playing out the strings uh, to end the year here. The Sharks, they're looking for Celebrini first overall, which I don't know. Well, but um, this would be Sharks plus two and a half or nothing in this game. Um, I have absolutely no faith in the Wild to cover. Not, uh, not only. I mean, they're minus 400 favorites. I have no no interest in them at that number at all. Um, so I'll shop around, see what a, minus, a plus two and a half is for the Sharks. Maybe jump on that. If it's too expensive, this will be an easy stay off game for me. So it's a pass for me in the spot. But I'm definitely not laying any type of number with the Wild here. Uh, let's see. Shut up, Tim. Yeah, you tell him, Lenny. Sharks reverse puck line. If you want to be bold, I mean, why not, right? Why not? LOL. Sharks money line. Yeah. White Sox money line it is. Detroit sucks. Kane slash White Sox parlay. There you go. There you go. Let's start fights in the chat. Uh, we'll move on, though. The Winnipeg Jets and the Vegas Golden Knights. The Jets minus 130 favorites. Total five and a half in this game. Taking a look at this uh, game here, where we have the Winnipeg Jets open up at a minus 130. It's down to 125. So we've got to move towards the Vegas Golden Knights in this game. Line open up at a 6 at plus 101. It's down to a 5.5 at minus 115 um, in this game. And this is another game. There's 14 games on the card, and I'm, I'm not. I'm passing on a bunch of them, I notice here. And this is another one where I think this line is about right. My numbers have this game around Jets minus 125, minus 130. They're at home. They have the goalie advantage with Hellebuck over whoever they want to put in net, Hill, Thompson, Patera. Um, even though the Vegas, yeah, the Vegas Golden Knights coming off that collapse loss against the National Predators in overtime, but that, at least they did get the point in overtime there, which helps them a little bit uh, as the magic number keeps getting lower and lower for this Vegas Golden Knights team to punch their ticket back in the playoffs. And imagine being a team like the Vancouver Canucks, you win, uh, you win your division, potentially you get the number one overall seed in the, uh, in the West. Uh, actually it would be the Dallas stars right now. You get the number one seed in the West and you get to play the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round. That sucks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'd be, I'd be pissed if I'm a division winner. And I have to see Vegas, the defending step cup champs, with all of their LTIR moves that will magically all be healthy by game one of the playoffs somehow, some way, because that's how health works. Um, and uh, no, it is, it's, it's a pass for me. Um, I would lean Winnipeg in this game if I had to bet it, but uh, not at the minus 130 price tag in this game. <laughs> Detroit versus everybody, LOL, in the chat. Yeah, VGK money line, VGK. Fair. We'll keep on moving on here. This one kind of caught my attention with the line the way it is. Um, in the next two games, you can kind of say that here. We have the LA Kings and the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers minus 150 favorites in this game with a total of six in the spot. Um, let's take a look at the line history in this one here where we have LA and um, – Edmonton line opened up with like, Oilers minus 152 favorites. It's now a minus 150 um, in this game. Line opened up at a six at minus 120. It's down to a six at minus 115. So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a move towards the Kings in this spot here. And I kind of agree with the line movement towards the Kings um, in this spot here. I have the, the Oilers around 125, 130 favorites in this game, uh, which doesn't present too much value on the actual Kings money line itself. But just the way the Kings team is starting to play a little bit better here, they're starting. To, I think the Kings could be a tough out in the playoffs. Uh, when you look at this team, um, they'll be a, they'll be a they'll be a tough team to face if you're the Vancouver Canucks, if you're the um, Dallas Stars, if you're the Colorado Avalanche. They won't be a fun team to play as a wild card team. Both these wild card teams, the Kings and the Golden Knights, are will not be fun to play. Um, so, uh, but. Uh, 
I'm leaning towards the plus 130 with the uh, LA Kings. I might pull the trigger on it. We'll see. This is a 9 o'clock game, so I have a little bit of uh, time to think about this game as well. It's Kings or nothing for me, uh, but it's a pass. Um, Oil's money line. Draw. I could see a draw on that game. Fiala, two points. Kempe, two points. It's an interesting look there. I like the two-point uh, looks that you got there. But we'll move on here. This is a game I did a free pick video for last night. We have the New York Rangers and the Colorado Avalanche. The Avalanche minus 155 home favorites. Total six and a half in this game. Line opened up at a 144. It's up to a 155. So we've had a move towards Colorado in this game. Line opened up at a six and a half at plus 102. It's a six and a half at even money. So we've had a move towards the over. We've had a move towards Colorado uh, in this game here. And a lot of people are going to be like, wow, the Rangers minus, uh, plus 145. Dogs in this game, they've got to be the look, right? I think this line's the way it is for a reason. You look at what the Colorado Avalanche have done, uh, advanced analytically wise 4.085 expected goals for only 2.695 on average the last 10 games against. Uh, so this has been a team that's been absolutely dominating expected goal battles. Uh, they've been one of the better teams offensively and defensively as of late. I have them graded around minus 170 in this game, um, at home which Ball Arena in, Col- in Denver, Colorado, is one of the best home ice advantages in the NHL when you look at what this team has done uh, at ho- on home ice this year. The Colorado Avalanche are one of the best home teams in hockey. Um, and I look for that here, 28-7 at home this year, the Colorado Avalanche. Now, granted, three straight games between these two teams have gone to overtime. But I'm going to look for this game to be uh, the Avalanche taking care of business in this one. I like the Avalanche minus one. I got it at plus 102 uh, in this game. I see value here with the Avalanche, even at this bigger number against the Rangers. I think people are going to look at this game. And the Rangers might be the biggest public dog of the day, in my opinion. So we'll see. Uh, but uh, I am on, I'm on the Avalanche minus one, plus 102. Um. Let's see. With your headset on, I thought you had a batter's helmet. A little idea. Yeah, I'm all ready for opening day. I'm, I'm stepping into the box. Yeah. Hey, Nicholas. Good morning, bro. Hockey is pretty uh, pretty uh, through, though. Uh, pretty tough today. I parlayed the Wild with the Orioles and Dodgers. Yeesh. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to be on the Cardinals today. Um, I'm going to be fading the Dodgers every game of the year, though. I'm on the Angels' first five as well. Uh, this is where you go two-point line combos. I think we get a lot of scoring, yeah. Fox and McCarr. Uh, Nerfy Brown Robin, here we go. Let's get the Nerfies out. Orioles and Angels. We have Tigers and White Sox. We have uh, Astros and Yankees. We have Padres and Giants. Nerfies, there you go. Uh, Kreider, two points, plus 315. I like some unders. What else is new? Roslovich, two points, plus 42. Yeah, I hear the books begin to limit you if the line moves in the direction you bet it too much, uh, not just uh, if you win too much, just something to keep in mind. Fair. Unders and alternate puck lines. There you go. We'll move on here. Uh, the Seattle Kraken are taking on the Anaheim Ducks. If you've heard this matchup before, yes, it just happened a couple days ago. Uh, and the Seattle Kraken won that game for nothing. Out of nowhere, they were able to score, and they could play some defense. Granted, they played the Anaheim Ducks. So, line opened up at 226. It's at a 228. So, we've had a move towards the Kraken in this spot. Line opened up at a 5.5 at minus 125. It's now a 5.5 at minus 110. So, we've had a move towards the under, and we've had a move towards the Kraken here slightly uh, in this game. Um, and... This is a game that was one of the easier passes on the card for me. Uh, there is a big card today, and laying two t- 235 is not something I'm going to be doing with the Seattle Kraken. But on the flip side, do I want the Anaheim Ducks? No, I learned my lesson last game. Uh, it doesn't matter um, what number you're getting with the with the Ducks. This is just a, a, a team that I shouldn't be putting my money on. Um, but uh, this is a really easy pass for me in this game. Um, I lean Ducks, but no interest there. Uh, let's see. Abs money line. Release the Kraken puck line. Good luck. 
two more NHL games, and then hopefully Tim will join us for some college basketball. Uh, the Dallas Stars and the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, we have the this game at Pickham total is six in this spot. Taking a look at the line history in this game here, where we have um, the Dallas Stars. Uh, they opened up. This will click. That'll be cool. I think this opened up at a pick em. Uh It opened up minus 106 on both sides. It's now minus 111 for the Stars. So we've had a slight move towards the Stars in this game. Line opened up at a 6 at minus 123. It's now a 6 at minus 112. So we've had a move towards the under in this game, and we've had a move towards the Stars. Uh, taking a look at my projections for this game, um, and I think this line is pretty spot on. I have this game projected for 6.05 goals, and I have this game projected for the Canucks to be around minus 140. 15 favorites in this game so i think this will be one of the better games uh to watch this is actually the battle for the number one seed in the west right now um uh if if the stars were to win they would have a pretty clear edge for the number one seed in the west then uh which is kind of interesting there uh, which is kind of crazy that the stars are playing this well with ottinger kind of struggling this year uh but this is a pass for me uh in this game one of the, this will be a great game to watch I don't think it'll be a great game to bet on. So it's a pass for me in this spot here. Uh, imagine if this was the only game. Yeah, I'd be betting baseball. Seems like Ducks revenge spot. Only a maniac would bet the uh, bet them after we died with them last game. So I'm hearing Ducks money line. Quack, quack. Canucks money line, even with the backup goalie. Yeah. Stars money line. Uh, not betting the Canucks unless Demko returns. Fair enough. We'll move into the final game here, and I do have a play on this spot here. We have the Nashville Predators and the Arizona Coyotes in this game. Preds minus 170 favorites in this one with a total of six in this spot. Uh, let's get into the line history in this one here. Last game of the night where we have this line open up at a 160. It's up to a 164 for Nashville. So we've had a move towards Nashville. Line open up at a 6 and minus 106. It's now a 6 and minus 108 in this game. And I have this game projected for the Yotes to be around minus 185 favorites in this one. Uh, so I see value here on the on the Preds. I did play the Preds last night. I played the minus one line. Um, and, yes, they're coming in off of that big uh, comeback win. But this is a team I'm not stepping in front of. I've, I made that mistake a few times during this little streak that they're on. I believe 16-0-2. They're on an 18-game point streak, um, which is insane. Uh, and I'm not stepping in front of that here. I got minus 103 for the minus one line for the National Predators in this game. Um, this is one of those spots where I'm not going to step in front of Nashville again. And I'm just going to look to back them here. And this is a team I think could make some noise in the playoffs if they continue playing this way. Uh, so Nashville minus one, minus 103 for me uh, to wrap up the NHL card here. Predators minus three and a half. Wow. Yotes are past. The Preds had a nice little run at the end of the season, but that's all it's going to be. Fair. Uh, but we will move on here. Um, we have the Sweet 16 uh, starting today, uh, and we're going to be starting with the Arizona Wildcats and the uh, uh, Clemson Tigers in this one here. We have the Wildcats, seven and a half point favorites in this game, total of 152 and a half. Just perfect timing for you here. I know you're I probably know. sitting back <laughs> waiting for me to end. I was finishing my Bojangles while, while I was listening to you talk hockey because I did not bet a single hockey bet today because today's a baseball day and college basketball. <clears throat> yep. But this line opened up with the Arizona Wildcats as six and a half point favorites. It's up to a seven now uh, in this game. So we've had a move towards Arizona in this spot. Line opened up at a 152. It's still a 152. So we've had no movement towards the total. We've had a half point line movement towards Arizona in this game. Um and let's take a look here. 56% of the tickets, 56% of the cash coming in on the Wildcats, 42,050 tickets in. And then 64% of the tickets and 81% of the cash is on the under in this game as well. The line's not moved. I've made money with both these teams so far in the tournament. Uh, I was on Arizona the first game. I had Arizona money line and parlays in the sec for the second game against Dayton. I was on Clemson big time against uh, New Mexico State. We were both on a big time against Baylor. It was just New, Mex New Mexico, not New Mexico State. Oh, my bad. New Mexico, not New Mexico State. It was the Lobos, not the uh, the Aggies. But um, And for this game here, I have not bet this game at all. Um, I would like to bet Arizona in this game. Uh, I think this is a massive step up in competition for Clemson. 
uh, not, maybe not a massive, but I wasn't very high on the Baylor Bears. They were one of those teams where I was looking to fade them um, throughout the uh, the, the uh, bracket anyway. Um, and Arizona, I think, is one of the best teams in the nation that can win a national championship this year. Uh, so I do have futures. I think I got two boosted futures, one at plus 360, one at plus 520 for Arizona to win the region. Uh, so I'm going to just hope the Arizona Wildcats win this game. I'm leaning Wildcats in this game. I like the I like that the line's moving in my direction here in this spot. And uh, I think the I think the Wildcats win this game. Cover is another question. I don't know about that, but um, win. I think the Wildcats definitely do. But uh, I don't know about cover. So I'm staying off this game at the moment. I will say I'm looking back at my bracket, and um, this is the only Sweet 16 matchup I had correct was Arizona and Clemson. Um, because I had St. Mary's, I had Washington State, I had Auburn, James Madison, Kentucky, Utah State, and Oregon. So, um, I, I, I had Purdue, it, Purdue, Gonzaga, right? I did not because I had Utah State, <clears throat> but um, the and as I go through it, oh, I actually do have Arizona going through. I thought I had Clemson. Is this mine? Yeah, I guess this. I thought I had Clemson to the Elite Eight. Apparently, I did not. Um, I still think Clemson wins this game. Um, I don't know why I put Arizona in my bracket, um, but I, I have I have Clemson uh, in this one. I took them plus seven and a half, sprinkled the money line. Um, I think Clemson makes the Elite Eight, and then eventually goes down to North Carolina. Um, so I, I like uh, I like Clemson in this game, Nick. Yeah. I'm, uh... See, this is a tricky game for me. This is this is one where I'd maybe I'd maybe tie errors on a money line and things, but other than that, I really don't have an interest in this one. And I also like to look at it. Which team do you think is more battle tested? I mean, Clemson beat Arizona or beat, uh, beat Baylor. So I, I think Cle- well, just I, and I think that it's it, I don't think it's close. ACC is far superior than Pac-12. Yeah. So the fact. I think Clemson was a lot better than they actually are. Um, than they're than they're ranked. Um, I, I like Clemson this much. I think they're a live dog. Fair. Back to the chat. Um, <clears throat> Bo Jangles, yes, Bo Jangles. Uh, Cle- you took Clemson plus seven and a half with your no sweat bet. I like it. I think they went out right. Arizona wins. Clemson covers. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm all ears. Uh, good morning. Good morning, real deal. Welcome to baseball season. <clears throat> hey, he's here now. Finally, Tim, I just wanted uh, to uh, day. What's up, my dog? Uh, let you know that the forecast in Detroit is in the 50s and a little chilly, but but sun. Good enough for uh, <clears throat> for the White Sox to go and beat the Tigers today. Um, the, the Astros line seems so fishy. Astros line up, smashes lefties. And they're putting their ace on the mound versus the Yanks. I, I like it's the, also the Yankees. Huh? Yeah, I mean that he says the line seems so fishy. I mean, they, they, they know they're gonna get money on the Yankees, so that their the lines yeah. are gonna be shorter against the Yankees. Um say I got you. Uh sup, dude, Pelicans. Uh I didn't even look at NBA today, I'll be honest. Oh, you know why I didn't look at the NBA? Two games. Uh, there's two games. One of them's a 16 point spread with a road favorite. And the other one is Bucks versus Pelicans. Uh it's Peckham. Should be a good game. Um I have nothing to not nothing in the NBA today. Uh good luck to all. Uh I'll you catch you all tomorrow. Full NBA slate. I'll holla at your at uh at you later, Tim Dio. All right, sounds good. Uh we're not talking NBA now until Monday because of uh Sweet 16 Final Four. Uh Sweet 16 Elite Eight. Um, Pelicans first half lean, but I'm also on Celtics minus 30. Um, you're jeez. You know what? If you're gonna take it, you know what? Take it all the way. That's fine. Uh, the way that how Boston College blew uh, out Clemson makes me think they get smashed here. Um, that's one of the reasons why I liked Clemson to go far in the tournament. Um, they after that, that wake up game, call. that was their wake up call. I think they make a nice run. Boston revenge against Atlanta. Yeah, I'm not laying 16. And my Bucks, uh, no, I'm not betting the Bucks. Peace out. See you, Marcos. Uh, keep it simple. Arizona minus seven and a half favorites. Not only have been winning, 
but they have been covering. So they have to keep winning and they have to keep covering. That makes sense. Uh, oop, I almost just clicked on hockey stuff. Let's go to this game. Uh, yeah. Although, although, hold on. This game's first. Oh, time wise, it. Oh, okay. My bad. Uh, when I yeah. Uh, I mean, this one's a whole two hours before the UNC game. Yeah, Bovada had it all messed up when I typed up the odds. But uh, we have the UConn Huskies and the San Diego State Aztecs. Eight and a half point favorites were the Huskies when it opened up. It's now up to 11, 11 and a half in some spots. Line opened up at a 135. It's still a 135 here in this one here. And um, we have this game. Uh, opened up, or we have 75% of the tickets, 79% of the cash is on UConn, so the public likes UConn, but the line's moved up towards them here. Uh, we have 60% of the tickets are on the over as well, 43,121 tickets in. And I did a little research on this game. Um, and since the 2007-2008 Florida Gators went back-to-back, teams, defending champs in the Sweet 16 are 0-4. They're four and five in the round of 32. They're 10 and two in the round of 64, and three of them missed outright. No team, no defending champion since the Florida Gators in 2007, 2008 has made it to the round of the Elite Eight. Um, all of them, and a few of them as one seeds, died in the, in, in the Sweet 16. Um, and we've seen them get bounced early in things here. And there's a little bit of a revenge in this game, Tim. Yep. These Aztecs lost to the Huskies in last year's national championship game here. And I know a lot of people like the opposite side. I know it feels like over 50% of people have the Huskies winning the whole damn thing. But give me the Aztecs in this game outright, plus 500. Uh, I'll also grab the plus 11 in this game as well. I think this game is going to be a, a drag them out, ugly type of game. The Aztecs are going to muck it up. They're going to keep it close and potentially win this game outright. Um, I like the Aztecs in this game at 5-1. to one. Uh, I think this is the upset of the Sweet 16. Uh, and after a he- uh, favorite heavy uh, round of 32, I think we see some dogs here in the Sweet 16. And I think it starts here with the dogs getting knocked off by the Aztecs. Give me the plus 11. Give me the plus 500. I don't want anything to do with the side. I like the under. Um, because it, and, and I think this works out either way, actually. Um, because I, it, it goes under and San Diego state keeps it close because if they if, if, if San Diego state's keeping it close, it's going to be 48 to 47 with five minutes to go. Like it's going to be one of those, those types of games or on the contrary side, if this game's an absolute blowout, uh, it, it, it most likely to me is like a 82 to 47 game and it goes way under because it's an absolute shit stopping. Um, the only way I really see this one going over is if San Diego state scores the points themselves, like they would have to score 70 in this game. And I don't see them scoring 70 in a game versus UConn. Um, and I know you like the, the one stat and everything, it's very difficult to go against UConn. Yes. Um, that's why I'm not – I respect your bet. I'm not taking UConn. I am not. I'm not betting UConn, but I am not taking San Diego State. I like the owner in this one. Fair. Earl Sports Bets grows when I tune into the uh, into Earl Sports Bets. Thank you. Uh, your bank account grows uh, when I tune into Earl Sports Bets. Get it. Um, it felt – so good smashing Norfolk State last night. Yes. Uh, the best line I caught them at was plus 165. The momentum change was so apparent uh, that it was definitely the most hood basketball game I've ever seen. That was that was great. College basketball last night was fantastic. Three and one. Um, there you go. NBA shit the bed. Drippy. You're a drippy. Let's head to this one, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Let's take a look here. The North Carolina Tar Heels and the Alabama Crimson Tide in this game here. Um, we have these Tar Heels opening up. I'm seeing three and a half on bet online. Um, some fours, uh, fours wear up. We're starting to see this line climb a little bit. We're starting to see some fives here. We see a five on Caesars for this game. 
Uh, the line opened up at a, we'll call it a four because it opened up four on most books because it opened up at three and a half and within a minute and a half it was a four. And it's moved up to a four and a half. Some fives are popping up. Line open up at a 173. It's up to a 173 and a half. So we've had a line move towards the over. We've had a line move towards the Tar Heels in this game here. 85% of the tickets, 90% of the cash is on these Tar Heels. So the public loving these North Carolina Tar Heels in this game. And then we have 65% of the tickets, 93% of the cash on the over in this game. 54,238 tickets in. I agree with the total here in this spot. Now, when it comes to this game here, I did double down on this game. I would like to fade the public here and fade North Carolina. However, I don't trust Alabama defensively to keep this game maybe close. And I can see North Carolina running away with it late. However, what do I what do I expect to get from Alabama? Points. Points, points, points. Team total over 84 and a half at minus 120 and the full game over 163 or 173 and a half for me at minus 110. I'm doubling down on the total here in this spot. I don't bet many totals here, but this is one of those games where originally I did a little gamble at first glance. I thought I was going to be on the Tar Heel team total over in this game. I'm flipping sides and I'm going to grab the, the tide here in this one. Uh, and I, I like I, I think the tide are very live to win this game outright, uh, to be completely honest. I know you like the Tar Heels. Um just this market, it's finally moving towards the Tar Heels. It was stuck on four for a while, even though all the money, all the tickets coming in on North Carolina. I think this could be one of those games that's closer than people anticipate. And all I'm really going to do, though, is ask the Alabama Crimson side, score me 85 points, and I can care less whether or not you win or cover or anything. Just score 85 points. And like, give me the full game over as well. I think the Tar Heels by double digits. Um, and I think Tar Heels put up 100 points by themselves today. Um, this Alabama team that finally played good defense. Good job. You shut down Grand Canyon, who was averaging 66 points a game in a shitty conference. So good job. You were able to slow them down to 61 points in the game. Um, I'm, I'm not, uh, is anybody else impressed? No, me neither. Um, I think UNC blows them out today. Um, I think this is like a 102 to 75 type of game uh, and it gets over the total, but I think UNC you'll, you'll see the Ben squad in with three minutes ago. Um, I think this one, I think this game gets ugly. Um, and when it comes to it, I, I, I would go Tar Heels team total over. I would go UNC minus four and the over in general. Um, so I'm all over Carolina today. I also have them winning my cha- winning the championship. So I know you do. So and and I will say if there's a tw- team in the tournament that I feel can compete with UConn, it is UNC. There you go. A bunch of people saying drippy. Uh, Dave's here. Yo, know, AO. Uh, morning, gentlemen. Morning, untouchable. Um, sweet home Alabama. They're going to go home. They're, they're, and, and they're going to go home today. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, and they're coming. Home. I got the Tar Heels by a mile. Um, yes. Everybody uh, does. No way the Tar Heels lose. No way. Uh, the Tar Heels shut, lose. shut up. Uh, swept college basketball, in Norfolk State, Seton Hall, Seattle. I can't believe the Nuggets fall to the fake Suns. Um, I'm not worried about that game. Um, yeah, they lost to the Suns game again at home. Um, the the starters were kind of beat up, so um, Nuggets. I don't. I think they kind of punted that game last night. Uh, they're still fifteen and three since the All Star break, which is best in the NBA. So there you go. Um, there's no way the Capitals win tonight. Stop no, they absolutely can win tonight. Uh, Tar Heels minus eight. Yes, my usual Blues money line in the under. And UNC covers. I agree. UNC covers tonight. Is anybody on Bama? I would like to. Oh, I know Real Deal Prime is. I was just yeah, there, I've seen plenty of people on Bama, Nick. Stop it. All right. I've seen plenty of people on Bama. Fine. We have the Illinois Fighting Illini and the Iowa State Cyclones. I'll give a quick breakdown because my class starts in one minute, but I'll be a couple minutes late. It is what it is. Um, uh, in this game, minus one and a half for the Cyclones. Total of 146 in this game. We have 51% of the tickets and 74% of the cash coming on the I and I in this game. And we have 49% of the tickets, 66% of the cash coming in on the over in this game as well. This line opened up with the Cyclones as two-point favorites. 
it's now down to a one and a half. So the line has moved with Illinois here as well. I like the Illini in this spot. The way they've been playing has been really well. Uh, and I, both these teams, they won their conference tournaments. I don't know what to think about their conferences, though. The Big Ten, I mean, they had Purdue in it, and Iowa State had Houston in it. So maybe um, maybe that's a – I mean, both these both these teams had to go through bigger teams to uh, in their conferences. Um, I like the Illini in this spot. I think this line should have been a pick em, which it kind of is, but I'm getting plus money on the side of the Illini. I'm going to take a stab here with Illinois at plus 105. But uh, I'm going to head on out here. Um, Sounds good. I'm on the same page. Um, I have the Illini. Um, personally, I had Iowa State losing to Washington State. Um, I'm not as super high on Iowa State. Although, that being said, I said that Iowa State was probably more deserving of one seed than Carolina um, after Iowa State won their uh, conference tournament and UNC didn't. Um, but I am on Illinois. Um, I think Illinois kind of got underseeded in this one. Uh, I think that they should have been a two seed. Um, obviously, all the two seeds have won. So uh, I honestly think that I, Illinois was better than Arizona, in my opinion. Um, and I think they probably should have been a two. Um, but that that bracket in general, um, very solid because you have the <laughs> Big East champion, the uh, Big 12, Big 10, and they had the SEC champion in there. So, um, that, that was definitely a tough bracket, but should be a really good one. I got Illinois at plus money. Uh, also, I love the Predators, but I do, uh, but I, uh, but I'll be sprinkling the goods, good old Desert Dogs, Coyotes money line, and don't anytime goal. There you go, teacher. Then teacher, leave the kids alone. Um, straight Musk. Okay. Uh, happy opening day. Happy opening day to you as well, uh, DJ on Illinois. It's hard to fade, dude. Feces in the yeah. No, he's he's been solid. That is all the games for today. Once again, if you guys are interested in, in knowing what uh, we're on for baseball, we did a um, ESB show last night for baseball. All of the plays are on there. Um, so make sure you guys are checking all of that out. Uh, make sure you guys are following all the social media links. All of them are linked down below. We're posting there every single day. Lots of content on all of those platforms, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. So make sure you guys are checking that out as well. And uh, kind of a recap, uh, I will say uh, no hockey for me, zero. I'll be on Clemson, the under in the UConn game, UNC, and the over, and Illinois. Um, so there is the recap for today. Woo, baseball. No, not wrestling. Wrestling is garbage. Uh, that's going to do it for this one. Oh, one more, uh, more coconut bra. Uh, let's, let's, let, let's work on getting to, uh, to like, say 4,000 subscribers on YouTube and, and then, and then we'll talk and then we'll talk. We're at 3,700. If we get to 4k, we'll talk. Uh, that's going to do it for this edition of the Earl Sports Bet Show. We'll be back tomorrow with another one. Peace out.